Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we're going to be examining pairs of angles. Remember last time we looked at how to measure angles and how to um, do a few things with angles. Um, today we're going to be looking at several pairs of angles that might exist. First one that we're going to look at is the adjacent angles. Adjacent angles have a couple of properties. If you've heard the word adjacent, it just means next to. So, so they're going to be angles that share a side. All right, angles that share a side. So you might see an angle, let's say we have this angle right here. Another angle that's adjacent to it might look like that, where they certainly share a side together. They have this one middle side that they definitely share together, um, so they're considered adjacent. A linear pair is going to be, they need to be adjacent angles. And specifically, they need to add to 180 degrees. All right, so this is going to look like single angle. And then the next angle is going to come down and form a straight line with the first angle. So these two would then add to 180 degrees together. So if we look at the example on the bottom of the page here, if, I look, if I'm talking about AEB and BED, two angles AEB and BED, let's cover those. AEB would be this angle right here. AEB, BED would be from B to E to D would be this angle right here. If we consider what they are, well, if I go ahead and trace this out in orange, let's say, AEB is this one. BED is this one. They're going to form a linear pair because they form a straight line together. So they are adjacent and they form a linear pair. I'll erase that. I'll go ahead and write that down. Adjacent and linear pair. On the other hand, if we say that AEB and angle back AEB would be this angle here, angle back would be B to E to C, this angle right here. I can go and trace that out in red as well. Here's one of the angles, there's angle back, here's angle AEB. Well, they certainly are adjacent because they share side BE, that's their shared side, but they don't have a straight line that they form. You go from A to E and then E up to C. They don't form a straight line, so they're not a linear pair. So these are just adjacent to one another. Last one up here, I'm going to go ahead and erase the red quick. Here we go. Um, last one up here, angle DEC and AEB. DEC is going to be this one. AEB is going to be this one over here. Well, even though they look like they're a linear pair, they're for, it looks like they're forming a straight line, certainly, right? Even though that's the case, they're not adjacent to each other. All right, they don't share a side. They share a point E, but they don't share an entire side together, these two angles. So we'd consider those not adjacent, and by definition, they can't be a linear pair. A couple of terms for you real quick here, something that you've probably seen in the past at some point, complementary and supplementary angles. Complementary are going to be two angles that add to 90 degrees. All right, and then supplementary angles are going to be two angles that add to 180 degrees. So we could say a linear pair is going to be a supplementary set. For example, if we have an angle F that's 50 degrees, what is F's complement? Well, we need something that with this 50 degrees is going to add to 90, right, if it's complementary. So what, what with 50 adds to 90? 40. We'd say that the measure of the complement is 40 degrees. And we could make this a little bit harder here. Um, Let's look at example three. An angle is 10 degrees more than three times the measure of its complement. Find the measure of its complement. 
break this problem down into pieces. And let, let's read it a little more slowly. An angle is 10 degrees more than three times the measure of its complement. Find the measure of its complement. 10 degrees more than three times. Let's break that into pieces. Um, 10, 10 degrees more, if you see that more in algebra, usually signifies addition. So that would be like a plus 10. Then three times, that's going to indicate a multiplication. Something's going to be multiplied by three. Measure of its complement, remember its complement, add to 90. That's what that's going to indicate. An angle is 10 degrees more than three times the measure of its complement. Let's draw a couple angles like that. We have an angle here. Let's say we have an angle here. Together they're going to make 90 degrees. They're complementary. One of them is 10 degrees more. So let's say this one is 10 degrees more than three times its complement. We don't know how big the complement is, so I'm just going to call it x. 10 degrees more then three times this x angle. All right, so let's read, read once again, make sure we're right. An angle is 10 degrees more, so 10 degrees plus three times its complement, if its complement is x, three times x. We could write this as an equation, since they add to 90 degrees the x angle plus the 10 plus 3x angle. All adds up to 90 degrees together. From here we could combine some like terms and we could say 4x plus 10 is equal to 90. I could go ahead and subtract a 10 from either side and we could say 4x is equal to 80. And then dividing both sides by 4 now, if we divide both sides by 4, we'd end up with an x equals uh, 20. Now plugging this back in, we know that its complement is 20, easiest plug-in that we're going to be doing all year. Just plug in for x when it's already just x. Its complement is going to be 20. And then if we plug it into the other one, 20, well, 10 times 3 plus 3 times 20, or 10 plus 3 times 20, 3 times 20 is a 60, plus a 10 is a 70. Here's a 70. Let's make sure we are correct in our answer. It's complementary. 70 and 20 definitely add up to 90. This one is 10 more than 3 times this one. Yes, it is. We are set. Going on down, vertical angles are going to be angles that are opposite each other. I'm going to jot that down. Opposite each other. Specifically, they are also they're also congruent. And that might you might see this sign squiggle sign with a couple of with an equal sign right underneath that indicates they're congruent, which is same size, same shape. This shouldn't be confused with the approximately equal sign, completely different things. So if I look at a couple angles like angle one, let's say, and angle three, they're opposite sides of each other. They're also the same size. You can you know this because one is supplementary to four and three supplementary to four, so they have to be congruent to each other. So I could say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 1. Let me put that squiggle equals. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 1. Similarly, I could do that with the other pair of angles. I could say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Now you could have multiple pairs of vertical angles in the same diagram. Um, looking at this one on the right here, I know that this angle is vertical to this one. Um, we could have this angle vertical to this one. What other colors can I use? Pink. This angle is vertical to this angle. I'll use yellow if that's visible. Not very, but oh well. Um, those are congruent to each other. But then you could also look at the larger angles. Let's say, let me take this off with two. That angle is going to be vertical to this whole big angle, right? And you could have multiple sets of these. You could say something like, well, this this whole angle right here is congruent to this whole angle right here. 
And you could keep on drawing more and more sets of angles. You could have sets of three of them. So three right here is congruent to opposite side of it. Um, one, two, three starts right. There we go. Would be congruent to that big angle. There are a ton of them. There are a ton of them. I'm going to leave that problem up to you to count up how many vertical angles there actually are in that diagram. And then a couple of closing thoughts that I want you to think about. Why is it that an angle must be supplementary, or excuse me, why is it that an angle that is supplementary to an acute angle has to be obtuse? I'll give you a clue. Try drawing a picture of this. All right? Try drawing a picture of this. If, if you have an angle that is acute already, why is it that the other angle needs to be obtuse if they're supplementary to each other? I think the picture explains it all. Have a delightful day. I will see you in class next time.